welcome back here tune into midcap radar on cnbc tv 18 well look out for two stocks in the broader markets it's just dell which is at the high point of the day it's spiking as we speak up around two and a half percent and also india bulls housing finance on the flip side it is declining in trade right now it's down around one and a half percent so keep these two stocks on your radar but in the nifty pack we have ntpc that stock is in focus up around eight odd percent it is in the focus as the company will be considering a buyback Aba agam vakil joins in with more details Agam, over to you. Well, Nigel, there are several factors which are playing out in favor of NTPC, and a lot of these factors have come through in the conference call, as we've already spoken about. Right at the top, uh, a lot of uh, weightage has been given to the buyback, and I want to bring in some details here. So, uh, yes, the company has said that they are considering a buyback, but without any details or timelines on this buyback. At this point in time, based on the 25% of their net worth, well, that comes down to around 29,000 crores. But the truth is that on the balance sheet, they do not have cash of more than. 2200 crores more importantly the trade receivables currently stand at a little less than 16000 crores which a lot of analysts are suggesting will not be cleared for well it'll take at least 3 to 4 months for these receivables to come in which will make it hard for the company to consider buyback at least in the near term however there are several other positives that have also come through well, the first one is that the fact that they're, they're going to be focusing a little more on renewables. There's no greenfield capacity addition in thermal. That is the other positive. Of course, there are no under recoveries, and one of expenses that came into play for this particular quarter will not be repeated. And these are perhaps some of the more important reasons behind the strength that we have seen in the stock today. Okay, uh, well, uh, 32 points. Uh uh, right now on the nifty uh, 11209 and things are looking pretty uh, good by the way the market breadth is uh, pretty solid 1100 stocks are higher as compared to 670 stocks which are uh, down uh, and uh, lots buzzing lots buzzing we highlighted a few agam uh, highlighted ntpc but there's what motherson there is uh, you know scient which is up uh, 11 11 and a half percent Reddington, which is up 13 and a half, Advanced Enzymes is up 9%, uh, and only highlighting things with very large volume, CG Power is up 5%, Sriram City is up uh, 6%, JM Financial 8% gains, Parag Milk is up about 6, 6 and a half or percent. Uh, so just go down the list and volume start to uh, get thinner and thinner. Glenmark is higher in trade, but uh, it's off the highs on the back of uh, the results for the first quarter, which were a good set. Uh, Sonal, why don't you take us through the highlights? Uh, well, it was a good uh, set, uh, Prashant, this time around. And it was more of a, marg a margin beat that we saw. Revenues were up 1% versus an expectation of a 2.5% growth. But apart from that, very strong. So margins came in at 20.6% versus an expectation of 14.7% growth. Profits also accordingly higher by 133%. If we quickly look at the geographies, well, it was rest of the world market and the Latin American region that didn't do so well. And that is what showed in the muted revenue growth this time around because there the revenues were down around 18 not percent. Indian growth was around 4% and US growth also not so exciting but management says in their con call that they expect recovery in the US sales on a quarter on quarter basis. The API business should also do well but apart from that they also said that they did see some price erosion specifically in their dermatology portfolio and the price erosion was to the tune of around 15 odd percent. They also said that they are looking at fundraising in the US market which they expect to uh, f complete by second half of FI21. Margin guidance of around 19 to 20 percent and they also expect an out licensing, an out licensing deal to get completed in this year itself. That is quite positive. And apart from positive numbers, the support that the stock gets is through their valuations, 12.1 times FY22 EPS. And that's why on the back of that, the stock is doing really well today. Uh, thanks uh, very much, Sonal, for that. So that is Glenmark in focus, 484 or so. But compared to the rest of the pharma pack, I mean, Glenmark is a big underperformer. Sun TV is trading higher. It was up almost 9%, 10% early on. I think it's come off the highs, but still going strong. Uh, and this is, by the way, despite first quarter set, which was actually weak. We spoke with uh, the management, and uh, they told us that uh, ad revenues are currently about 75% of where they were pre-COVID. Listen to SL Narayanan, Group CFO of the company. In the circumstances, I think we have delivered an extremely satisfactory set of numbers. Uh, advertisement revenues, unfortunately, bore the brunt of this uh, COVID thing. Uh, I mean, that's something which is uh, inevitable. But you're right, uh, the subscription revenues have been sizzling. 
same time last year, we also had IPL uh, contributing significantly to the quarter's numbers. This time around, we didn't have it, but uh, it seems like uh, we may still earn some revenues uh, because the tournament is going to uh, be underway during the current quarter and it'll slip into the next quarter as well. Ad revenues are now running at almost 80% of the pre-COVID levels. And uh, with a little luck, we may even post a decent uh, number for the full year because we're getting into Onam in Kerala and then we're getting into Navratri and then we we'll get into Deepavali and then Christmas, New Year. So if the lockdown were to uh, you know, decelerate in terms of its intensity and slowly but surely everything else gets opened up, I suspect there is a huge pent up demand which will come and you know surprise us positively. Okay, so that is Sun. By the way, I think Z reports numbers this week uh, over the next two days, and uh, that should be interesting as well in the context was in the context of what Sun has told us. But with Z, of course, there is other stuff which uh, you know investors have not liked. Uh, so we'll be here uh, on that as well. The stock, by the way, Z also has been doing well, 169. Let's move on. In our special offering, uh, Bottom Line, we track the story of a stock that has been a great wealth creator over the years. It's been a big success, but not without some blemishes. Madhusan Sumi Systems is set to split up uh, into two businesses in the near future. Is the move likely to benefit investors, shareholders? Uh, my colleague Sonal Sajdev is, Sajdev is here to take a look at the bottom line. Sonal. Uh, thanks, Prashant. Um, uh, uh, but the bottom line full text is on uh, cnbctv18.com. So I'll try and put this in a nutshell. Uh, Madison Sumi, a success story. Uh, it has seen, uh, you know, revenues grow uh, th at about 35% CAGR over the years. Uh, it has a, a, a sort of a 270 facilities across 41 countries. It serves some of the best names in the business. Daimler, Audi, a Volkswagen. Uh, you have uh, you know, great uh, success in terms of wealth creation that Prashant was just talking about. If you had invested 2,500 rupees in the IPO in 1993, that would have grown to over 40 lakhs. I mean, you returned over 40 lakhs to you uh, by now. But there are uh, you know, some concerns there. Uh, first, the growth in revenues, about 188 times. But you know, profit growth has been far slower, about 117 times. And operating cash flows, uh, under 77 times. So that's a bit of a niggling uh, kind of worry. And if you look at, uh, if you split it up in terms of uh, the business, uh, standalone and the other businesses in the consolidated business, you find the other businesses contribute about 90% of the revenue. So that's about 57,000 crore out of what, 63,000 crore, but only about 45% to the profit before tax. So you're asking yourself, okay, has the company delivered in terms of, have the investments delivered in terms of returns? Uh, there's, there's also, uh, you know, some areas of discomfort uh, sort of beyond that. Uh, one of that is um, uh, primarily that, you know, bulk of these other revenues come from uh, uh, SMRP BV, uh, which is not a company completely owned by Madison Sumi. It's, it's a 51-49 joint venture with SAML, which is a promoter group entity. So uh, effectively, uh, you know, Madison Sumi's helped build a business, uh, you know, which is half controlled by the promoters. And why this is worrying in today's reorganization plan context is that uh, uh, the promoter group company, S. Samil, uh, in its merger with, the, you know, Madison Sumi after spinning out the, uh, the wire, wire uh, harness business, is uh, they will get a 5.1, uh, you know, shares for every one share uh, they hold in Samil. And this, if you look at, you know, dispassionately, you look at uh, Madison Sumi Systems standalone uh, EPS and you look at Samil's uh, sort of earnings, uh, the ratio works out to about 3.1 is to 1. So, I mean, you're left asking yourself, I mean, do I want to be in this? I mean, where do I go? I mean, I, if I had it, I'd say, okay, I'd still perhaps, perhaps prefer being in the wire harness business than uh, in the other businesses. But I mean, the, the market's a big place. It's a, it's a notion of opportunity. So why do you want to restrict yourself? Uh, if you are uncomfortable, uh, there, are, there are lots, lots of other opportunities there. There are leading uh, you know, original equipment manufacturers like uh, Hiromoto and Bajaj Auto in the two-wheeler space, for instance, 
who are trading at fairly attractive uh, valuation multiples, uh, you know, vis-a-vis -vis Mothers and Sumi, and they generate a lot of cash. Similarly, you got HCL Tech, uh, Infosys, and many other stocks. So, I mean, take your pick. What I'm saying is, you have a, if you are uncomfortable with Mothers and Sumi, there are options to look at, uh, not too much to fret about. Thanks. Okay, thanks a lot for that perspective. Very important, and important note that this stock has done very well in this month itself, up around 34-odd percent. But it's time to slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll get your ground report to understand the COVID impact on India's $5 billion salon industry. Stay tuned.